Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Derek Young of KSO here today with KSO Today from the Quality Inn Hotel in Westminster, Colorado, actually, just outside of Denver, Colorado. I'll explain more about why we're here at a, later in this podcast. Uh, no Matt Hall for the first time on KSO Today. You're getting Derek Young, the recruiting analyst for K-State Online. So hope you enjoy it. You probably will. We'll lead it off right now with a little bit of with the, the Kobe Bryant thing, of course, that everyone's been reading about and hearing about in the news over the past 24 hours. He has obviously passed away after a helicopter incident a crash, uh, tragically taking the life of he and his daughter, Gigi. So obviously our condolences out to he and his family and the rest of the victims in that helicopter crash, Bruce Weber. Uh, has made note of it and, you know, offered his condolences as well after he's ran into Kobe Bryant on more than a couple of occasions through the basketball world. Back to Kansas State world, the basketball team lost to Alabama in the Big 12 SEC Challenge on Saturday, 77-74. to A little bit different starting five in this one for the Wildcats. Bruce Weber elected to go with David Sloan, Dejuan Gordon, Xavier Sneed, Monte Murphy, and McCall Mawin as his starting five. Obviously, some key omissions with that starting five. Of course, Antonio Gordon. He's served the first of his three-game suspension after the brawl in Lawrence where he had some culpability and and what transpired in Allen Fieldhouse. Also, no Cartier Jada. A little bit of a surprise. Um, we did find out you know, later that he was – not made available to the media afterwards, even after he was, you know, one of the standouts for K-State in that game against the Crimson Tide. So we'll have to learn more about what has transpired, what is transpiring with Cartier Jada. It could be nothing. It could be something. We got, uh, right now, I don't think we have enough of the details to really dive in if anything is at play. Um, you could obviously make the argument that there was Bruce Weber probably wanting to be insisted on looking ahead and into the future and wanting to see more time for David Sloan and wanting to see more time with true freshman Dejuan Gordon and having the ability to put them on the floor a little bit more than he had been in the past and maybe taking Cartier Jada out of that starting lineup um, you know, would give him the freedom to do so. It clearly did not try or transpire that way despite starting and despite you know, the coaching staff wanting to see more minutes from both Dejuan Gordon and David Sloan. Um, they both fouled out, and that probably chewed into their floor time in this one against the, the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. They only combined for 34 minutes despite both starting and K-State wanting to play them more. So, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out the way you want to, and in that case I'm sure that it did not from Kansas State's perspective. Obviously, also no Levi Stockard in the starting lineup. Probably not as much of a surprise. I understand that, but he has started some games this year. Instead, they start Monte Murphy, another true freshman. So definitely a youth movement in Manhattan that the coaches seem a little bit more committed to at this point than they had been even a week or two ago, which I think is a good sign and probably the the right move and and needing to look ahead and and take that step forward and committing to that kind of process. It also, I think, and and some of it is signified by also Levi Stockard only, I think, getting about 10 minutes of game action against Alabama. And that is with, you know, some foul trouble and with Antonio Gordon not being available. So I think they're you could look into that as, as how much is Levi Stocker really going to play into the picture going forward because in a day where there was some foul trouble and in a day they were shorthanded at the position he plays, um, more because Antonio Gordon was still you know serving the first of his three-game suspension, that he didn't play all that much. And, you know, thinking about it right now even, I think some of it has to do with they finally – you know, kind of made that decision that it's probably not best for K-State to play Levi Stockard and in McCall Moeen at the same time. They just don't really feed off each other well. Not a, not a lot of spacing can be done with those two on the floor at the same time, so that's also a decision. Um, and it was a game where Moeen didn't get in foul trouble, though some others for Kansas State did, so that probably, you know, 
led to, you know, a much less Levi Stockard in this one. In the first half, I mean, Kansas State was up one in halftime, but they were actually playing to Alabama's pace a bit more than I thought that they would. Obviously, Alabama likes to get up and go, a little bit more of an analytical program, um, threes and easy twos, not contested twos. So uh, a team that plays with much more pace, Kansas State kind of played to that pace early and often. Um, and despite that, they still led at halftime by a point. Um, so some surprises here and there with how this one transpired. Obviously, out of the get-go in the second half, it got pretty ugly. Even despite being up one, they fell down 16. We did see typical Cartier Jada. I think some have said it better than I can, or I have. I think KSU fan actually deserves some credit for it. He does enough in about every contest that he plays to keep both teams in the game, his own and the opponent. Yes, he had 17 points. Yes, he had a hot streak. That brought them back down from down 16, and they probably aren't competitive if not for Cardia Jada. I understand that, and he deserves credit for that, and he is a key player and an important player for the Wildcats because of that. But he also has that a little bit, I want to say, Jameis Winston quality, Russell Westbrook quality to him also when he's also going to keep the opponents in the game. He was also very inefficient on the floor. Um, he scored 17 points with a lot of them coming in that comeback, but he did it on 19 shots. There's a lot of players you know, out there that can score 17 points on 19 shots, so he needs to be more efficient, um, certainly, even though he did have a good handful of minutes that he put together to bring Kansas State back into it against the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. He also committed only two turnovers. That's great. Uh, they came at a pretty bad time. Those two turnovers are probably – not probably they are what spurred the 15-0 run by Alabama to begin with and gave from the Alabama and head coach Nate Oates a 16-point lead um, nobody likes silver linings I understand that nobody likes moral victories I understand that I'm not trying to say this was one but in a game where Dejuan Gordon fouled out and was in foul trouble in a game where David Sloan fouled out and was in foul trouble in a game where Kansas State only lost by three when Cartier Jada and Xavier Sneed combined for 10 of 35 from the field, um, it shows you that they are still finding ways to be competitive at times. I know that there's been some convincing blowouts as well in, in losing fashion, but they are finding ways to be competitive when the players they need to count on are just not playing at the level that they necessarily need. And some of those young players that they want to count on were also in foul trouble. So just kind of a weird game, a weird outcome, and a weird performance. And, and but yet again, another three-point loss. Up next for, for the Wildcats will be uh, hosting Oklahoma on Wednesday against the Sooners. Uh, they already lost in Norman, so they'll try to rebound and avenge that loss moving forward. We'll get away from basketball for the last few minutes of this KSO today on January 27th, 2020. Probably should have said that off the top. That's okay. It's January 27th, 2020. We are in Westminster, Colorado. Uh, we'll... Because I'm the recruiting analyst, I like to slant this a little bit towards recruiting. K-State did offer 2021 athlete Keegan Johnson over the weekend from Bellevue, Nebraska. He's a Husker legacy. His father, Cluster, played for Tom Osborne's Nebraska. Keegan was offered on his visit to Manhattan. Also, his brother, Cade, plays at Northern Iowa. His brother, CJ, played at Wyoming. So an interesting and talented family. Good good roots, good pedigree there. Um, probably going to be tough to, to uh, land regardless uh, but something to keep an eye on. Kansas State is being very active with some of the top targets in the Midwest in this cycle, a little bit more so than last cycle, with their involvement in Iowa and Minnesota and, and Nebraska. Other than that, some good walk-on pickups lately for the Wildcats, a program that prides themselves on that. Uh, they build a very good walk-on program, and it makes up sometimes for some of the misses on scholarship players because they always find a couple – you know, preferred walk-ons that typically end up multi-year starters. It is what it is. That's a valuable part of this program and not something to be ignored. A few to make note of recently that they have landed a uh, Bo Palmer, a linebacker out of Blue Valley, um, gritty, instinctive kid that at least will make some hay on special teams, if not at linebacker at some point in the future. Ty Bowman of Chinook, Kansas, plays 
plays quarterback for Chanute. I think he'll play a different position at Kansas State, maybe some tight end, maybe a little linebacker. He's a good athlete, long athlete, six foot four, I think about 212 pounds now, if I remember correctly, and someone that I think ran a 4.6 or a 4.7 at Kansas State's camp. So he is actually a pretty intriguing athlete that if you want to bet on one of these preferred walk-ons playing considerable snaps at some point for Kansas State, he'd be the one. Uh, they also land a linebacker, Michael Book of Liberty, uh, good, good, another good athlete he, he, that could play linebacker and a specialist and Owen Lawson of Rockhurst who could be a kicker or punter. Um, obviously, they're looking to uh, create some more depth at that position because of some, you know, graduations and stuff of that elk. Uh, I think we'll have some Xavier Kelly stuff to share on in the future on the site. Obviously, he's a Clemson transfer, played defensive tackle for the Tigers, didn't play a whole lot. Um, from Wichita, Kansas, was committed to Kansas State during his recruitment out of high school at one point before flipping and becoming a Clemson Tiger after being recruited by Brent Venables. So uh, I I think that we'll have some interesting news on that front um, in the near future, probably in the form of a recruiting notebook. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It'll be more of a premium feature. So if you're not signed up, we encourage you to do so. It's very well worth, worth it. The next big visit to be aware of takes place on February 1st, where I think the Wildcats will have top 21 target Devin Neal of Lawrence on campus. Uh, They have a few top running back targets on on, on their board right now. Another one obviously being Jaden Williams of Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, Devin Neal's a pretty big deal. Uh, Who knows if they would take two. They'll definitely take Devin Neal anytime he wants to come in. There's some competition for that. He, being a Lawrence native, he does – have quite an affinity for the Jayhawks. Nebraska is putting a hard push on him. Iowa State's putting a hard push on him. Nebraska hosted him on a visit not too long ago. So that's going to be a recruitment that's probably going to be one of the probably the toughest one for Kansas State to do uh, inside the Sunflower State for the class of 2021. Um, and back to what we kind of started with in Westminster, Colorado, right now, just a suburb of Denver. Uh, we're here because uh, we're going to get some information on Jake Rubley. We're visiting with the four-star quarterback commit for Kansas State. The Wildcats landed around the holidays. Um, you know, one of the top, if you want to consider and combine, you know, ranking and offer sheets and stuff of that nature. If you love that stuff, being a recruiting geek like I am, he's probably the best pickup that Kansas State has had in several years. Maybe, maybe dating back to the first version, to the first, you know stint of Bill Snyder. So that's how significant his commitment is. Uh, Rivals 250 athlete, Kansas State won out for his services over the likes of LSU, over the likes of North Carolina State, over the likes of, you know, the in-state team Colorado. So we're here getting more information on him, going to chat with him actually later today. Um, Video interview stuff to look at, look forward to on our site, on our YouTube page. If you don't subscribe, you should, K-State Online YouTube. But that'll probably do it for now, for for today on KSO Today, the Tuesday version. Today is Monday, January 27th, 2020. Tuesday, January 28th, 2020, you'll probably get another dose of Matt Hall back on the KSO Today. So look forward to that. Hope you enjoyed my first edition. Derek Young here for KSO on KSO Today.